Are you dreaming of a trip to Bali or any other region in Indonesia? Before you pack, let's discuss the various visa options available. We will help you with all the bureaucracy, making sure you don't need to worry about paperwork too much. Stay tuned for our comprehensive Indonesia visa guide packed with tips and tricks to ensure your journey goes smoothly. One of the main visa options is the Indonesian EVOA, one type of e-visa, electronic visa on arrival, and it's designed to make your travel easier. Instead of waiting in line upon arrival, you can apply online by just filling a form with your personal information and some travel details. Pay the fee and submit your application online. Once you receive your pre-approval, you're ready for the next step. When you arrive at the airport in Indonesia, present your pre-approval and they'll stamp the sticker visa in your passport. It's usually fast and simple and keeps you focused on the fun parts of your trip, like planning your beach days or temple visits. But sometimes it can get tricky. We'll tell you more about it in just a bit. With the Indonesia EVOA, you can enjoy tourism, participate in government visits, attend business meetings, purchase goods, or simply transit through Indonesia. However, you're not allowed to work in Indonesia on this visa, nor can you attend events as a paid speaker. This visa is designed for short-term, non-commercial activities. Not everyone is eligible for the EVOA. Citizens from ASEAN countries like Thailand, Singapore, the Philippines, Cambodia, Brunei, Malaysia, Myanmar, Laos, and Vietnam don't need a visa to enter Indonesia. However, other nationalities can apply for the EVOA. Check the list on the screen now of eligible countries to confirm if you can apply. Remember, it's a single entry visa. You can only enter Indonesia once with this visa, so plan your trip accordingly. Once you're in, you can stay for 30 days. If you wish to extend your stay for another 30 days, you can do so by visiting the local immigration office at least a week before your visa expires to avoid any issues. Gather essential documents like your passport, scan, or photo, and at least two recent color passport-sized photos. The completed visa application form, itinerary, accommodation details, and proof of financial stability. The EVOA fee is approximately 32 US dollars or 500,000 IDR, and children also need this visa to enter Indonesia and parents or legal guardians can apply on their behalf. You can start your application directly through the government website or opt for a more streamlined process via iVisa. Many travelers report technical issues such as website freezes, payment errors, and difficulty filling out information correctly on the government site. To avoid these hassles, using iVisa can be a more reliable option. Additionally, ensure you have at least two blank pages in your passport for the visa stamp. An e-visa, different from the EVOA, is used for longer stays or specific purposes and is directly delivered to your email and ready to be presented for entry. If you're eligible, applying online is the way to go. The e-visa process involves submitting the required documents and is typically designed for longer stays such as 60 days or more and for specific purposes like tourism or business. For the e-visa application, you will need a valid passport for at least six months, recent passport-sized photos, a completed visa application form, your travel itinerary including return flight details, accommodation details, and proof of financial stability, which usually means bank statements showing at least $2,000 US dollars. Business travelers will also need a letter of invitation from their employer or business partner. The e-visa government fees vary, but it's typically around 50 to 100 US dollars. If you prefer to get your visa upon arrival, Indonesia offers a visa on arrival or VOA option available to travelers from over 90 countries. This visa allows a stay of 30 days and can be extended for another 30 days. The process involves completing the paperwork and making the payment at the destination's airport, typically using cash. Be prepared for longer queues upon arrival, which is why many travelers prefer the EVOA for a quicker and smoother process. For the VOA, you need a passport valid for at least six months, a return or onward flight ticket, and proof of accommodation. The cost is approximately 35 US dollars. For both e-visa and e-VOA, you can extend your stay once for another 30 days. Once you're in Indonesia, you can head to the local immigration office to apply for an extension. The Visa on Arrival or VOA also allows for one-time extension, bringing your total stay to a maximum of 60 days. 
If you're not eligible for the VOA, EVOA, or E visa, there are still other visa options like the Indonesian B211A visa, which is for tourism or business purposes and allows a stay up to 60 days per entry. Indonesia offers various types of visas to cater to different needs. For instance, the business visa, multiple entry, is perfect for business travelers who need to visit Indonesia multiple times within a year. This visa allows stays of up to 60 days per visit and is valid for one year. The social cultural visa is ideal for those visiting friends or relatives, participating in cultural or social activities, or attending courses. This visa allows a stay of up to 60 days, which can be extended up to four times each extension, allowing another 30 days. For students wishing to study in Indonesia, the student visa is necessary and requires an acceptance letter from an Indonesian educational institution. Meanwhile, a work visa is required for foreigners employed by Indonesian companies and necessitates sponsorship from the employing company. Applying for a visa can be straightforward if you follow the guidelines carefully, but there are some common pitfalls to avoid. Firstly, ensure that all personal information matches your passport. Any discrepancies can lead to delays or rejections. Secondly, submit all required documents, including proof of financial stability, accommodation details, and a return ticket. Late applications are another common pitfall. It's essential to apply well in advance of your travel dates as processing times can vary. Lastly, make sure your photos comply with the guidelines. Common issues include incorrect dimensions, unsuitable backgrounds, and poor photo quality. Real life experiences shared by travelers reveal some common issues with the e-visa and e-VOA application process. Many have faced technical problems on the website, such as payment or reloading the page after encountering errors. Additionally, issues with payment not going through or receiving an unpaid status even after attempting to pay were reported. For instance, some users reported encountering a 500 error multiple times before finally being able to submit their application successfully. To avoid these problems, as we suggested before, consider using iVisa's website, where you can save time when filling in the application, avoid errors as their team will check the application before sending it for approval, fill the forms in your own language, save the application, and return later, avoiding processing delays, site timeouts, and CAPTCHA errors. It's suggested to try the application process during off-peak hours if you decide to use government websites or choose to expedite the process with rush and super rush processing speeds on iVisa. One primary cause of visa rejection is insufficient supporting documents. Ensure all required documents are submitted accurately to avoid delays. Previous immigration violations can also harm your chances of approval. Financial capability is another crucial factor. You need to demonstrate that you can cover your expenses during your stay with sufficient proof of funds. When applying for any visa, always make sure your travel dates are accurate and match your itinerary. Double check all personal information for accuracy to avoid delays. If you encounter any issues during the application process, it's advisable to reach out to the support team or use reliable visa assistance services like iVisa. So what do you think about this travel guide? Drop your comments below and let us know. If you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Hit that notification bell too, so you never miss out on our latest travel tips and guides.